Hello, can you hear me? This is a uh, control room in City Hall. Okay, I can hear you. I can hear you. Okay. I can hear you. Okay, uh, some of you have the mics open on your uh, PCs or tablets. Can you please mute them so we won't have feedback? And we are live streaming already. You can start whenever you're ready. We're waiting for our chair. He's waiting for the stuff to load. Yeah. Give it a minute. Things seem to be really slow today. Okay. Again, this is control room. You could have that. Yeah, well, I was doing it from my computer. Yeah, my apologies to everyone, but DJ is just running a little behind. He's having some issues. Thank you. 
He's restarted it soon. Okay. Okay, DJ's still trying, so let's give him a few more minutes. DJ, can you hear us? DJ, can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you fine. Okay, I think we're ready to... Can you see? Uh, yes, I can see the presentation just fine. Sorry for being late. It's fine, DJ, we're here. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Um, this is a interesting way to meet up. Um, it is currently 4.12 p.m. and um, let's get the meeting going. So before we begin, are there any changes to the agenda? No, no changes. Okay. And any public comment or anything equivalent to that? I don't believe so, no. Okay. All right, well, let's move on to item number one. Okay, um, first of all, welcome back everybody. <clears throat> Happy that you're safe and sound and hope everybody is doing really well. If you have any questions, just speak up. And it's also been suggested that if you're not speaking, you should mute your microphone. So this way it won't pick up any unwanted conversations or noise. Okay, so. Can everybody hear me by the way? Not everybody at once. I can hear you fine. Yes, yes, Proby, I can hear you. Thanks, thanks. It works with my students, so I thought I'd try that on you guys. <laughs> okay. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah, just try that one. Okay. It's not okay. showing the, What's that? It's not showing the. Can you see the presentation, by the way? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay, that's two. Everybody, can you all see the presentation? Yes. Yes. 
All right, then, thanks. Okay, <clears throat> so let's get started. Item number one is a certificate of appropriateness for the property at 4412 Hastings Drive in the Austin Terrace Historic District. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, it's zoned R5H, which is residential historic. It was constructed in 1939 into a non-contributing building. The certificate of appropriateness is for the construction of an addition. So it's in the Austin Terrace Historic District as stated. Here it is. You can see it's sort of in the middle of the block. This is what the house looked like during our last survey, which was about the year 2000 or so. And I'd like you to note that big center window because that's going to be um, a point in our discussion when we talk about the modifications. <clears throat> Excuse me. This is what the property looks like now. Now, please take a look at that center window, okay? As you can see, it's been altered. It was changed, no approvals or permits given, and we'll get back to that in just a minute. What the owner wants to do is construct an addition here in the back. It's really more like what we call a portico share or carport. It's open, it'll have a roof, it'll have some, support, some supporting structures, but mostly it's in the back when it's not readily visible from the street. Zoning has it through the application determined that there's no kind of conflict with this at all. So it's going to be very, very simple. Okay, give us one second because you can't see everything, can you? Okay, there we go, okay. Seriously? Okay, that's pretty much it. <clears throat> it's going to have a slope roof covered with shingles. Like I said, it's going to be very open. It's more of what we call a carport, but because it's a structure, it requires permits from the city and it requires review by the HLC. Now, portico shares are almost always, or carports are almost always approved, especially if they're in the back, because ideally they're just not visible. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, they don't really have much of an impact on the historic structure and they can be easily removed. This is the area where it's going to be located. As I said, that's in the back, not terribly visible, well, really not visible from the front, somewhat visible from the back because there is an alleyway, but you can see that the building has no significant architectural features that would be damaged, altered, or destroyed by the construction of this carport. Just a minute. So looking at all the bases, we're recommending approval based on the following. It's approval with a modification, okay? So as you can see, it's going to go here. The roof will somewhat mimic what's there right now. It'll be the same kind of shingle, but it will be open, and this just won't be readily visible as it is now. So the design guidelines recommend that all new construction, including detached infill and additions to existing structures, should preserve and enhance the streetscape by appropriately addressing the elements of the historic streetscape you introduce additions and locations that are not vis visible from the street, generally on rear elevations. You locate additions carefully so they do not damage or conceal significant building features or details. Design an addition so it's compatible in roof form, proportions, materials, and details with the existing structure. And design an addition so that if removed in the future, the historic building's form and character defining features are not obscured, damaged, or destroyed. And the Secretary of the Interior Standards for Rehabilitation recommend that new additions, extra alterations, or related new construction shall not destroy historic materials that characterize the property. The new work shall be differentiated from the old and shall be compatible with the massing, size, scale, and architectural features to protect the historic integrity of the property and its environment. New additions and adjacent or related new construction shall be undertaken in such a manner that if removed in the future, the essential form and integrity of the historic property and its environment would be unimpaired. The modification is that the owner either change the front window to match the original or the owner return to the HLC and receive approval for the new front window and that the work on the window be completed before any new permits for work are issued. So we can see if the owner's representative is available or not. Mr. Sarsila, are you there? Mr. Sarsila? No, 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 no. Okay. 
don't know if this would be him or not. Well, I'm not sure. Okay. Because it says here plus nine. I don't know if the owner's representative was able to call in or not. So do you have any questions? Okay, they're letting them know to, to press a number to unmute if they are there. Okay. Are there any questions? Hey, Proby, this is DJ. Um, can you go back to the current condition of the building, a uh, picture with the the current window? This one or this one? Uh, the oh, you front, mean the front Sorry, the front. That's what you're yes. saying. Yes. Okay, sorry, my bad. That's okay. That. Yes. All right, thank okay. you. It looks like a slider, like a sliding door. Right. A double sliding door. And originally, it was this. So it looked like a very large window that had some kind of casements enclosed right in the center. Right. Yeah, it looks like it's all metal sash. All right, great, thank you. Um, do any other commissioners have questions? Now, what we can also do is this, if the owner and, and or his representative is not present, we can uh, go back and revisit this at the end of the meeting, or we can table this the next meeting. Okay. Um, or you can make a decision yeah. now, but considering the modification, I suggest that we let the owner know. Yeah, no, I definitely agree on that. Let's wait until the end of the meeting to see if the representative comes. And if not, then we can make a vote and table it if need be. Okay. If the owner is here or the owner's representative, uh, if you are calling in, uh, you can press star six to unmute yourself. Just throwing that out there. No, I guess not. I guess not. Okay, we'll come back. All right, sounds good. Let's move on to item number two. Item number two. Okay, item number two is a certificate of appropriateness for the property at 1800 Byron Street. Just a minute. Okay, here we go. Yeah, this is a certificate of property for property 1800 Byron Street, which is located in the Manhattan Heights Historic District. It's zoned R3H, which is residential historic, and it's part of Memorial Park. So um, status is basically really not applicable at this point. It's neither contributing or non-contributing. The certificate of appropriateness is for construction of a new concession and press box, installation of a scoreboard, landscaping, fence replacement, enlarged par parking lot, and new lighting. Okay, so this is where it's located. See, there's the baseball diamond. And this is the area they're going to be discussing. Um, they have a baseball diamond there now. As you can see, the field's a little overgrown. And they have some bleachers and some fencing. But they want to add to this project. They want to add some landscaping, as you can see at the top, the perimeter, the trees. They want to add a concession stand. There's definitely going to be lighting. And there will be a scoreboard as well. The concession stand will be very minimal. Okay, it's a one-story building. There will be some windows. You can see there's brick. Okay. And Here you go. And here's the scoreboard. 
Oh, and by the way, the fencing that they're proposing is chain link. Um, before I go ahead and read to you the guidelines, I will tell you that we've had some um, proposals in Memorial Park before, specifically the tennis court, where we did approve chain link fencing um, because of the sport. Uh, we felt this was the best fencing that was available. It was protective enough. This one's going to be very tall um, and it seems to work in this sort of atmosphere. So keep going. Now, you may remember that last year you did approve some changes to this senior center, which is right next door. I guess this is part of a city project to improve Memorial Park in general. Now, of course, our guidelines don't really address things like ball fields and concession stands and things like that because we just don't see them very often. So we have to sort of stretch the guidelines, if you will, but we're recommending approval with the modification based on the following. The design guidelines recommend that the height of new buildings should conform to the height of the existing surrounding buildings. New construction additions should be compatible in height and scale to attach adjacent structures. The relationship between the height and width of a building establishes proportion. The proportions of new buildings should be consistent with dominant proportions of existing buildings. Construction of new fences, stairs, or sidewalk rails and replacement of older existing fences is allowed on historic properties provided that the proposed site feature is of a compatible material and scale. Rock, brick, wood, and wrought iron are acceptable materials, but each case is decided individually. Cinder block and chain link fencing are relatively recent developments and are therefore not appropriate fencing materials. The height of the proposed fence should complement the structure, primarily as viewed from the street, and should not obstruct the public's view of the building. Place non-traditional site features, such as swimming pools, playground equipment, concrete pads, and baseball goals, basketball goals, sorry, Tree houses, dumpsters, and trash receptacles only in areas such as rear yards where they're not visible from the street. Introduce new fences and walls compatible in material design, scale, location, and size with original fences and walls in the historic district. And the height of the proposed fence should complement the structure and should not <clears throat> obstruct the public's view of the building. Any proposed fence higher than 32 inches solid or 48 inches open measured from ground level at front property line or a side yard property line on a corner lot shall be reviewed by the HLC and any proposed fence higher than six feet between buildings on an interior property line or across the rear property line shall be reviewed by the HLC. When new landscaping is planned, it should be designed to complement the structure in the streetscape. Maintain the property's natural topography and avoid grading that adversely affects drainage and soil stability or could negatively impact existing trees. Slopes shall not be paved. Most of the older structures in El Paso have parking provided at the rear of the property in a garage or carport structure, and every effort should be taken to maintain the use of the original parking areas. Introduce new site and street lighting that are compatible with the human scale and the historic character of the district. Consider the location, design, material, size, color, finish, scale, and brightness of a proposed fixture in determining its compatibility. It's not appropriate to introduce new security lying on lighting on standard height power poles in the residential historic districts. And the Secretary of the Interior Standards recommend that new additions and adjacent or related new construction shall be undertaken in such a manner that if removed in the future, the essential form and integrity of the historic property and its environment would be unimpaired. The modification is that the Neighbor Association review the proposal and send comments to HLC for consideration. Now, I have to explain that when it comes to public projects, we like to have them presented to the HLC. It gives everybody an opportunity to review it. It gives people who are going to be directly affected by this property a chance to come in and state their case and weigh, you know, put in an opinion. Uh, but in this case, the neighborhood association has not been very responsive. I sent an email and the architect has tried to get in touch with them, but we have not been able to get in touch with them at all. However, I can tell you that if something like this goes through, the neighborhood association will be upset that they weren't contacted or they weren't advised. So I have no issue with the proposal itself. There's certainly the space for it. There's a baseball diamond there and it's being updated. The issue, though, is whether or not the Neighbor Association has had a chance to weigh in and give their thoughts. So I think if we give them a little more time, or if you want to prove this with, say, the modification that the Neighborhood Association sends a letter to the Historic Preservation Office saying they approve or they don't, um, if they approve, we'll go ahead and mark it approved. And if they don't, we can certainly bring it back. What do you think? All right, Proby, this is DJ. Um, thanks for giving us a summary on this one. Sure. Um, 
I largely agree with you, especially after, I guess, the lack of engagement from the one house on, what was it, San Jose? I think yeah. there was, mm -hmm. there was pretty, the neighborhood association was pretty tough to get to. So um, I agree with you, but I do have some questions um, regarding the design. Okay, let's see if the architect is available. Yeah, sounds Does good. Have check in or not. Okay, sounds good. Okay. Fred, are you there? Fred, are you there? Give me a second, DJ. I'm going to call Fred. Okay, not a problem. Okay. This is weird for everybody, but. picking up. Hey Fred, it's Provy. Good and you. Uh, you can be on right now if you like. Can you give me five minutes? Uh, yeah, we can give you five minutes. Okay, uh, well actually just call in. Yeah, uh, it's it's a Microsoft Teams meeting. I sent you a link. Okay, thanks. Bye. Okay, DJ? Yes, go ahead. Okay, yeah, I just spoke to Fred Dalbin. He's going to call in, but he needs a few minutes. So do you want to ask questions now or do you want to wait for him to dial in? Um, well, I mean, basically the, the main issue I have specifically regarding the neighborhood association's involvement are the light posts that are that are proposed okay. um, because that could have an effect on the surrounding neighborhood. So mm -hmm. I think at the very least, that's the big reason why I think it's valuable to get input from the neighborhood association. Um, and then I, was, I just had a quick question about the fencing, about mm -hmm. whether it matches the fencing at the tennis courts that was recently or somewhat recently approved or if it's different in color, you know, whether the chain link is coated in like a vinyl um, coating or if it's just there. Um, it doesn't matter either way. In my mm -hmm. opinion, as long as it matches the tennis courts, but I mean, if any other commissioner has different thoughts on it, feel free to you know, to contribute. But those are just my two cents. Okay. Okay. Um, I don't know how well it's going to match the fencing at the tennis courts. That was approved about 10 years ago. Um, I can't remember if the fencing at the ten tennis courts has been colored or not, or coded. Um, so beyond that... There we go. Okay. Um, yeah, beyond that, I couldn't really answer DJ except to say that chain link in this case is rather protective. Uh, we don't always recommend chain link, as I've said before, especially not in historic districts. But in this case, I can see how it's appropriate. Right. No, I agree. Yeah. I, I'm just thinking, I mean, since the guidelines don't have, you know, specifics regarding a, a baseball diamond upgrade. Right. You know, the, the best we could do is just be compatible with what's already there and, yeah. you know, not be too invasive or disruptive with the new design. But it doesn't seem like it. But still, it's good to do some due diligence at a time. But, um, yeah, I mean, when it comes to this, I mean, does anybody else have questions for, for Fred Dalvin? Because personally, I don't. I mean, I, I, I think I'm pretty much satisfied with the vote now, but... I'll defer to any other commissioners who have questions. Hello, Proby. Hello, everybody. Um, hey. Just wanted, just wanted to ask uh, the outline of the fencing on the court is pretty much just around it, right? There's no like double fencing where there's some at the street and then another one at the court. Or... No, Yvonne, I believe it's just that single line of fencing, as you can see here, with some entrances and stuff. Um, 
like, you know, gates and things. Um, no, I don't think it's going to be a line of double fencing. I don't think that that's required necessarily. I think the height is probably more important in this case. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, thank you. I concur with DJ. I agree, DJ, with you. I'm ready to vote on it. Thank you. All right. Well, I mean, if there are no other comments or questions, I think we can bring this to a vote. Okay. I mean, did you want to wait for the architect to sign in and say anything? Um, well, like I said, I mean, I personally don't have any questions for the architect specifically. Okay. But um, yeah, if any other commissioners do, then by all means, we can certainly wait for him to call in. Okay. I don't think I'll have a question either. Um, so I think uh, I would be ready to vote as well. Somebody wants to make a motion, they could. All right, well, this is DJ. Um, I'd like to make a motion to approve the proposed work with the um, modifications proposed by the city's historic preservation office to get um, the guests. Okay, which are? Um, that either the neighbor association send us a letter saying that they concur with the project and they're fine with it. And if they don't like it, would you like them to come back? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Then. If the neighbor association then has issues with it, then we ask that this come back to the next meeting, which is June 15th. How's that? Sounds good to me. Okay. I don't know if you can say that again, DJ, but finish the motion and then someone can second. Okay. Uh, sorry, I'll, I'll do my best. Um, I, I make the motion to approve this item with the um, modification to, I guess, have outreach from the historic or from the Manhattan Heights Neighborhood Association. And um, if the Neighborhood Association does not approve of the proposed work, then um, we can discuss it further during the next Historic Landmark Commission meeting on June 15th. I second. All right. Hey, hey DJ, when you ask for everyone's in favor, would you just do a brief roll call? Sure. Yes, let's, um, instead of how we usually do it in person, let's go individually and say our name and our vote, either yay or nay, or abstain if need be. Um, so we'll just go one at a time. And we can start with me. Um, I, it's DJ and yay. Uh, Chris Esper, yay. Vicky Hamilton, yay. Yes, yay. Ivan Lopez, yay. Mark Snaya Cortega, yay. Shane Mercer, yay. All right, sounds good. Thank you. Um, is that everybody? I counted. Did we have Vicky? Yeah, Vicky said yay. Yeah, we actually do have seven DJ because one commissioner right. um, basically turned out. He served okay. two terms and he can't come back, so yeah. Right, okay. Okay, yeah, I'm just checking to make sure all votes are accounted for. So yeah, if we have seven, it's unanimous yay. Okay, great. All right, perfect. Great, thank you. All right, well, let's see, on to... Item number three. Okay. Item number three is a certificate of appropriateness for the property located 1287 Elm Street in the Manhattan Heights Historic District. It's zoned R38, which is residential historic. It was constructed in 1921 and it is a contributing building. 
The certificate of appropriateness is for the installation of a new roof and a different color and a gate. Give us just a second. There we go. Okay, can you all see that? Yes. Okay, thank yes. you. I, all right. Lisa, yeah. Okay, so um, the property is located on Elm Street. And this is what it looked like several years ago during our last survey. Okay. And it's aged a little bit since then. Okay. The property owner currently has a roof. It's a little hard to see, but it's sort of grayish in color. And would like to install a new roof that's actually sage in color. And I'm going to show you what that looks like. Now, sage is here at the bottom. And this is more or less what the shingle looks like. Now, photographs aren't terribly accurate when it comes to color. So the actual sage is a little more of a foam green, but not very bright. Um, it's mixed in with a variety of colors. You can see some yellows in there, some beige is a little brown, and certainly some white. So it's definitely a very mottled color. It's not a deep, deep green like the Chateau. Um, it's definitely lighter than that. Now, the property owner wants to fix up the property, which is fine. But as I said, she really, really wants this color of roofing. When it comes to roofing, um, we always go with what we know is historically appropriate. And I've said this before, you know, most of the roofs in El Paso are made of wood shake at one time or another. Sometimes they were painted. We've seen that. But many times they were just removed and replaced, usually by asphalt shingle. So when someone comes in and wants to get a new roof, we don't make them put in wood shake. We ask them to just repeat what they have, which is asphalt shingle. Or in some cases, we ask them to look underneath that layer and see if there's anything underneath that. Sometimes there are, sometimes there are several layers, which means that the property owner has choices in terms of roofing, or and sometimes there's even a wood shake roof underneath that. And in those cases, the HLC has asked that the property owner duplicate that with a sort of desert tan kind of shingle. Um, as I said, we like to go with what we have evidence to do. In this case, there's no evidence that there was ever sage on the roof. What we do have though, is this the property owner did reach out to one of the neighbors and asked if he had any kind of documentation whatsoever on this roof and this is what he sent he writes the picture is from 1952 and the house is upper left of the picture and you can see the peach roof. roof oh thank you you can see the peach roof the apartments are to the right the color picture is from 2012 house with palm tree in front next to apartments so we can see in a black and white 1952 article that yeah the roof was a little darker that wouldn't be terribly surprising, especially if it was wood and it had been painted. They tend to be painted dark colors. I've never seen a white painted shingle roof or white painted wood shake roof, I should say. I haven't seen a black one either. I have seen green, I have seen brown, but that's about the range of colors. So what I explained to the property owner was that because we can't approve it administratively, because we just don't have the evidence to support this, she can take the HLC, which is what she's opted to do. Then she'd also like to install, oh, sorry, here we go. So I took this picture from Google Earth to see if there are other roofs in the vicinity that are similar in color. You see the red dot, that's 1287. It looks very light from here, but I can tell you when you get there in person, it's actually a darker gray than this. Not deep gray, but definitely lighter gray. It's probably been bleached along the way. But the picture, as you can see, shows a good chunk of Manhattan Heights, and I don't see a lot of green roofing. I see some reds, I see some browns, I see some light colored roofs, but nothing so much resembling a green. And then when it comes to the gate, the property owner wants to remove the wooden gate that you saw and install, uh, install either a wooden gate, as you see on the left, which wouldn't have that arch, but it'd be a very simple wooden gate, or the woven wire gate that you see on the right, which we don't see very often these days either. I used to see these in historic districts and really not so much anymore, but I think either one would be fine in this case. Now I'm going to remind you what this looked like before. Here we go. And this is what it looked like back in the day. We would also ask that that gate be placed back, not where it is now, which is at the pier at the front of the porch, but at the wall of the house itself, because technically that's where the facade begins. recommending approval with a modification based on the following. Actually, let's take this back here. The design guidelines recommend if a roof requires repair, the replacement materials must match the original and existing materials as closely as possible. Do not change the style or construction of the roof. 
Construction of new fences, stairs, or sidewalk rails and replacement of older existing fences is allowed on historic properties, provided that the proposed site feature is of a compatible material and scale. Rock, brick, wood, and wrought iron are acceptable materials, but each case is designed individually. Cinder block and chain link fencing are relatively recent developments and are therefore not appropriate fencing materials. The height of the proposed fence should complement the structure, primarily as viewed from the street, and should not obstruct the public's view of the building. Solid walls are appropriate for the side property lines, while an open fencing material is more appropriate for the front portion of the property. Introduce new fences and walls compatible in material, design, scale, location, and size with original fences and walls in the historic district. The height of the proposed fence should complement the structure and should not obstruct the public's view of the building, and any proposed fence higher than 32 inches solid or 48 inches open measured from ground level at front property line or side yard property line on a corner lot shall be reviewed by the HLC, and any proposed fence higher than six feet between buildings on an interior property line or across the rear shall be reviewed by the HLC. The Secretary of Interior Standards recommend the following. The historic character of a property shall be retained and preserved. The removal of historic materials or alteration of features and spaces that characterize a property shall be avoided. Deteriorated historic features shall be repaired rather than replaced. Where the severity of deterioration requires replacement of a distinctive feature, the new feature shall match the old in design, color, texture, and other visual qualities and where possible materials. Replacement of missing features shall be substantiated by documentary, physical, or pictorial evidence, and new additions and adjacent related new construction shall be undertaken in such a manner that if removed in the future, the essential form and integrity of the historic property and its environment would be unimpaired, and the modification is that the new roof match the previous or existing roof. Now, I'd like to see if the property owner is available to speak to us. Mrs. Noel, are you available? Uh, yes, can you hear okay. me okay? Yes, would you please state your name and your address? My, okay, my name is Sylvia Akiyogi Noel and my address is 1287 Elm Street. Okay, um, can you tell us why you'd prefer this color for the roof? Uh, primarily, uh, we felt that it was more energy efficient and we liked the we actually liked the color uh, in comparison to the the orangey gold brick. We felt that we could uh, make them work together in terms of sage landscaping in the future. Of course, that's subject to approval, but uh, there's a lot of sage plants out there in the tech, in the Texas and New Mexico desert, and I thought that would be uh, a good way to pull it in to pull it together. So. Uh, I should probably tell you that we did send in a piece. We found some old, old uh, uh, shingle underneath the gray-white shingle and sent that in. It is quite a bit darker. It was, it was, to duplicate that would not be energy efficient at all. It would be um, a solar furnace. <laughs> So that's our concern, is being energy efficient. This particular color is uh, energy star rated. There is a, uh, another color, uh, a, a truer gray called Harbor Fog that is also energy efficient. Um, after we, uh, there's a third color, but it was too orangey. It, it just didn't go with the, the rose front rock on the retaining wall. Um, after that, you get into um, darker colors that just aren't as energy efficient. Did you have any questions for me about that particular issue? All right, now, guys, that she sent in, and this is the old route. Then you cut off, Proby. Hey, Proby, could you repeat what the original roof was composed of? Because I I lost the details for that. Jeez. Okay. Here. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Yes. We're muted. Sorry. Okay. That's okay. Um, 
Not sure, DJ. I don't know if the original roof was uh, wood shake. I'm going to say it probably was. That's what the majority of residential roofing was in El Paso at one time. Right now, the roof has a very sort of light gray shingle and the owner sent in this and she said this is what was there before. So you can see it is kind of dark. Um, I couldn't tell exactly what color this is. It certainly doesn't look like Shasta white and it doesn't look like desert tan either. It seems to have a much stronger dark component. It's quite possible it's not made anymore. We find the colors do change after a few years and we just try and match them as well as we can. But what the owner wants is something a lot lighter. Let me see if I can pull out the sage to give you a better idea. Okay, yeah, in the meantime, uh, could you switch the camera to so we can see what the original roof was? Because I, I didn't see any of that. Okay. Okay, yeah, no problem. Take your time. Okay. Can you not see us, DJ? No, I can see the presentation, but not you. Okay. Okay. I, Do you think I, it's the presentation, not us? Um, then what? Yeah, because I'm holding up the sample of the original right now, and you can't see that, can you, DJ? No, I just see a picture of the, the house in the presentation. Okay, let's see what we can do about that. Okay. So you're saying it's an, an asphalt shingle. Oh, yeah, there it is. Okay, so it's okay. a, a, like a dark green. Okay. okay, yeah, so that's what it was. This is a better look at Sage. This is what we're talking about. See, it's got more of a seafoam green to it. It's definitely a lighter color. There's a little bit of white mixed in there. So before some yellows, some tans and things like that. And this is what the owner would like to put on there. Um, if we had any evidence that this was there before, if it had been approved before, anything like that, this is something we could have handled administratively. Right. But it's the introduction of a new material that's ever been on there before, so we can't say yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah, no, I'm familiar with the, uh, the sage color because we, um, approved that color for a number of the quarters over at Beaumont. Okay. Uh, or I think last year. Mm -hmm. So, but those had, those originally had asphalt shingles. So, or uh, not asphalt, uh, asbestos shingles, sorry. Oh, so okay. that's how it worked. Um, but since we are not 100% clear on the original material, um, yeah, it's a bit of, we're a bit up in the air with this. Um, I mean, the guidelines do state to, to match the original, or not the original, but also the uh, existing shingles as much as mm -hmm. possible. Mm -hmm. So while sage is a bit has a bit more green than the Shasta white, I mean it is a you know a compatible replacement, especially if the homeowner is interested in achieving Energy Star ratings. So um, yeah, no, I can understand that. So. Those are just my thoughts. Does any other commissioner have questions or, or comments in regards to this, uh, this item? Vicki, can you hear us? What do we do with Vicki? I think she's there, but I don't think her video is on. Okay. Vicki, can you hear us? Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Um, for some reason, I have to turn that off to get the presentation. Uh, the roof doesn't, I, I find that roof to be an improvement over Shasta White, if, if nothing else. And because of the way the house is set on the street, it's not very intrusive. Uh, does, what does the owner uh, think about the proposal that the gate be moved back? Ms. Noel? Hello. Um, I propose that the gate be moved back, and it's primarily because we've had intruders come up onto the porch and climb over the brick wall to get into our backyard where the pool is. And uh, they have damaged the brick wall. Mm. And that's the subject of another conversation, but uh, we plan to repair that wall. So what I would like to do is set that gate, whichever gate you decide best, back nine feet so it's flush with the main structure of the house and and hopefully discourage people from climbing from our front porch over the fence. That it won't stop them entirely, but it's to discourage them. Okay. And um, that's that's what that's about. 
Well, that's what Provi was also proposing. I absolutely agree with that. That moving the the gate back will be better. I, you know, which which gate does she prefer? That she has a swimming pool back there. I think there's a. That's the same question, Ms. Well, do you have any preference? Would you prefer the wood gate or the metal one? What do you think would be safer for you or better for you? Well, actually, you know, there's uh, there's two gates before they can get to the pool. And one is the old wire gate that could be replaced with a higher gate that wouldn't be so showy from the front of the, they wouldn't see it from the from the street. But we could replace with the wire gate up front. And it would give you uh, visually better spacing between us and the apartment building. And um, now it, it I will say the apartment building has a tall uh, wire fence. They have the old chain link fence, okay? And, and so I would not be matching that fence. I would be using the, the, a wire gate replacement. And it might require some uh, stonework on either side of it to, to provide the filler width-wise. So we would have to match it to the, the stonework that's being done in the back with our garage and, and um, we're, we're opening that. That's, that was previously approved. We're working on that now. The garage is uh, a rock building and we're opening it back out to the alleyway. It'll be a functioning garage when it's done. So we would have to so the posts on either side of that wire gate would probably be uh, similar rock work as, as the posts. So then you're going to put a solid gate back further. Is that what I was understanding you to say? Yes, that's what we could do. Okay. Which do you, what do you prefer to put the solid gate up front at? or put the wire gate up front and the solid gate further back. Let's see. Thank you. I'm surprised you're asking me. I, I would like the, the wire gate up front. Okay. Have any issue with that? Sorry. Do the commissioners have any issue with that? No. Okay. As as no, I mean, that, that sounds yeah. appropriate. I think that sounds good. Yeah. Move back even with the house. Is, that's a improvement. Okay. The, uh, I would like to ask a question to the owner. Would there be a, a concern if the, the gate is moved back a foot away from the facade of the house instead of flush? I think we typically try to do that so where it's not flush with the facade, correct? Oh, you mean further further back from the yeah. facade of the house? Yeah. Um, About like a foot. maybe ten or like another foot or two? Yeah. Yes. No. Yeah. Right. That would be fine, and that would probably discourage them even more. Yeah, anything that would discourage intruders would, is probably a good thing. But we, we would still maintain enough of a dog yard if we chose to have a dog. Um, that that would work. Okay. Any other questions? Yes, uh, this is DJ. I do have one question for the property owner. Um, when it comes to the drip edge, the metal drip edge around the the roof okay. shingles, like the by the the fascia, is that going to be painted or is that going to remain unpainted? The drip edge. Um, yes. Actually, um, the metal drip edge I hadn't really thought about. Um, so we're open to suggestions. I. I, I think we were 
assuming it had to be left playing. <laughs> well, um, I actually recommend the other choice, which is to paint it to match the fascia color. Um, okay. That's not an issue at all. Okay. So we had um, dropped off a chip of paint um, that we felt was uh, the best uh, slightly tinted white that would marry up the yellow that's in the, that brick. There, is, there are slutchy yellow bits in that brick and the, and the buff yellow that's in the, the shingle. And we thought it would bring that out. It's a citrusy white. It's barely tinted. Um, and so we were just trying to, you know, pull in the right direction so everything makes sense uh, together very subtly. And then, uh, yeah, we could do the same thing with the drip edge is, is paint to match. All right. Sounds great. Thank you. Uh -huh. Okay. Any other questions for the property owner? Seems a little bit used to. <laughs> All right. No questions. Well, if there are no other questions, then we can uh, move forward for a vote. All right. Well, in that case, I'd like to make a motion to approve this item um, with the proposed jingle color of uh, Owens Corning Sage with the stipulation the drip edge is painted to match the fascia. Um, in addition, the gate on the side of the house would be, there would be two gates from what I understand. The front gate would be a wire gate, the back gate would be a taller gate composed of wood or you know, a similar material. Um, and quite frankly, can somebody help me out with this one? Because I don't know the details too well. The location of the front gate would be one foot behind the existing facade. Front facade. Front wall. Yes, front wall. All right, thanks, Vicki. Okay, so the wire gate would be one foot behind the facade of the, the front wall. Okay, got it. And then any comments on, or any um, stipulations for the second gate? Or no, it's just as proposed. Okay. All right, so to restart, I'd like to make a motion to approve the roof as proposed with Owens Corning in a sage color. And the front gate would be composed of wire, as proposed, and it would be located one foot behind the existing facade um, in the front. And the rear gate would be as proposed. And that's my motion. Second. Okay. So let's go down the list. Um, this is DJ, and I. Say yay. Yay, Vicky. Marcia. Bye. Say your name. Chris Hesper, yay. Thank you. Mark Sayak Ortega, yay. Ivan Lopez, yay. Shane Mercer, yay. Mm hmm. All right. Mr. Macias, could you weigh in? Yes, I did. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. Francisco Macias, yay. All right, great. Thank you. Okay. All right. Well, all commissioners approved this item. So, 
we're in good shape. Thank you very much for coming to us with this project. Um, yeah, this is turning out to be a really interesting design. I really look forward to seeing how this turns out. Well, thank you very much. I'm, I'm very excited about this. We, we love the house. <laughs> so thanks. It's been a pleasure to work with Progy and all of you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, well, let's move on to item number four when okay. you get a chance. All right, we're going to pull that up. Keep going. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. Okay, item number four is a certificate of appropriateness of the property at 812 Monday Drive. It's located in the Sunset Heights Historic District. It's zoned R5H, which is residential historic. It was constructed in 1910 as a contributing building. The certificate of appropriateness is for window replacement painting of structure, and removal of window and infill with masonry after the fact. This property is located right on the corner. And as I always say about corner properties, they get the worst of it, and you're going to see what that means. The house is a very simple one-story building constructed in 1910, and this is what it looked like during our last survey. Now, I recently went by because we have an applicant in the neighborhood and I was on a site visit when I noticed that there have been changes made to the house and no approvals. So you can see it's been completely painted. The old windows have been removed and replaced. And there was a window here. Can you see that sort of shadow? Yes, I see it. Okay, yeah, there used to be a window there and there isn't any more. I also want you to take a look at that dormer. Okay, the window there has also been replaced. And this is what it looked like at one time. So the house had a very traditional fenestration pattern. Wood, one over one windows um, with a dormer window and looked like operable windows in the dormer itself. I uh, basically sent code enforcement out there and I asked them to take a look and I asked that the property order be cited. Now the pergola was there back in about 2000 when the survey was done, so this is not a concern. It's the other alterations that have been done without approvals that are a concern because they certainly send a bad message to the neighborhood. So I can't tell at this point though if these windows are operable or not. I suspect that they're not. Um, I can only approach um, using the public right of way, I cannot go on private property, so I couldn't go in and take a very thorough look. But they don't look operable to me. But as you can see, the framing members all seem to be in the same plane. They seem to be very flat. So I also need to look to see if any of this can be approved administratively. And the answer is maybe the paint can't. So the paint is not an issue. If the property owner had brought this paint sample in beforehand, we would have approved it. The windows, however, we would not. So we're recommending approval with modifications based on the following. The design guidelines state that if windows are damaged beyond repair, replacement windows should match the type, such as double hung, style, for example, six panes over six panes, and finish, such as a paint. Replacement windows on the main facade shall be comprised of the operable portions of the window and match the type, style, operation, configuration, and finish of the original windows. The size of the door or window opening should not be altered. Retain and preserve the pattern, arrangement, and dimensions of door and window openings on principal elevations. Often, the placement of doors and windows is an indicator of a particular architectural style and therefore contributes to the building's significance. Retain and preserve original doors and windows, including such elements as sash, glass, sills, lintels, casings, muntins, trim, frames, thresholds, hardware, and shutters. If repair of an original, an original window or door element is necessary, Repair only the deteriorated element to match the original in size, composition, material, dimension, detail by patching, splicing, consolidating, or otherwise reinforcing the deteriorated section. The removal of historic materials should be avoided. When repair is not feasible, door and window products will be reviewed on an individual basis using the following criteria. Architectural and historical compatibility, comparison to original profile, level of significance of original doors and windows, the architectural style of the building, and three-dimensional exterior applied Munson's that simulate or match the original Munson's may be approved. Single dimension interior applied Munson's are not appropriate. Neutral tones and muted earth colors are strongly recommended for the main body of the structure. 
Trim color may be a darker contrasting color than the body of the building. Paint colors must be of the period, times, architectural style of the building, and geographic location, because what works for a color palette for a home in California does not necessarily fit in with paint colors in El Paso. And the Secretary of the Interior Standards recommend that the historic character of a property shall be retained and preserved. The removal of historic materials or alteration of features and spaces that characterize a property shall be avoided. Deteriorated historic features shall be repaired rather than replaced. Where the severity of deterioration requires replacement of a distinctive feature, the new feature shall match the old in design, color, texture, and other visual qualities and where possible materials. Replacement of missing features shall be substantiated by documentary, physical, or pictorial evidence. New additions and adjacent or related new construction shall be undertaken in such a manner that if removed in the future, the essential form and integrity of the historic property and its environment would be unimpaired. The modifications are that the windows be replaced with operable one over one windows, that the window opening that was infilled be opened and an operable one over one window be installed in its place, that the work be completed in 30 days, and that no new permits be issued for the property until it's in compliance with all city codes. All right, thank you, Provi. Sure. Any questions for Provi before um, we see if the property owner or representative is on the line? Okay. All right, doesn't look like any questions. So All right. we can. Let's move forward. Okay, Mr. Talavera, are you there? Good afternoon, can, can, uh, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Uh, good afternoon, Ms. Velasquez, I'm, I'm here. Okay, introduce yourself, please. Luis Talavera, and the property address is 812 Monday. Okay, is this your property, sir? This is my property, yes. Okay, then. Do you have any questions for the property owner? Yes, I do have a question. Uh, this is DJ Savini. I'm the, the chair of the Historic Landmark Commission. Are you aware this property is in the Sunset Heights Historic District? Well, now I am, um, Chairman. Um, when we, we, we honestly did not know the process, um, and we're becoming aware that it's a lot more complicated complicated than we thought, and um, and we apologize for that. And, and when I mean we, it's me and my and my partner. I see. Okay. So um, the the realtor didn't tell you any information, or the the deed documents didn't note it, didn't state it was in a local historic district. Uh, you know what I've, I have. I have the, the information from the title company and from my, I guess from my view, I could not ascertain that it was in a historic, or that there were historic uh, guidelines for that property. I see, okay, thank you. Uh, any other questions for the property owner? I have a question for Proby. Can, can, can you just go back to the? Can we see the the original picture of the house? Again? Sure. So the facade here was a stucco look, right? There was no brick. It's hard to see. No, it doesn't look like there was even. It looks like it's been stuccoed over. Not unusual. Not unusual here. Um, and painted white and that sort of teal trim. But it also looks like they kept a lot of the original components because those windows definitely look like operable wood windows to me. And you look at the dormers above, um, that doesn't look, if it was an alteration, let me put it this way, if it was an alteration, it probably happened, I'd say not too long after the building was constructed. It was constructed in 1910. Okay. Yeah. So changes like that, if this is a change, after a while, they sort of accumulate significance as well. So that would be okay, is what I'm saying. 
but the guidelines still apply. So had the owner approached us about removing the window in that dormer, the same guidelines would have applied. We would not have allowed a slider in there. We would have asked it to be replaced with what's there already. And the secondary facade looks like this. Can you see the window that was infilled? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, and now it's gone. You know, something that we don't really advocate. We don't advocate having people change their fenestration pattern that drastically. We understand people need new windows. We certainly understand that new windows are expensive. We do allow new materials, but for the most part, we ask you to keep the same fenestration pattern because it's part of the original fabric. Uh, in this case, we never would have recommended approval of an infill, especially on a facade that's so prominent. On corner properties, because it's on the corner and it's facing two streets, basically, each facade is considered a major facade and it's treated that way. So what I'm saying is this facade would have been treated just like the front. We would not have said removing a window is okay or installing new and operable windows that don't match the original is okay either. Provy, would you go back to the front of the house, please? This is Vicki. Sure, this okay. front or the current front? That, that front. Uh, if you look at it closely, when I looked at this online earlier, mm -hmm. I think there's 16 panes in the upper sack in all of those windows when you look at them closely. Mm -hmm. I can it see some, one I can... Open, but there were divides, there were more muttons than, yeah. It's so hard to see, Vicki. I can see what you're saying, and they stand out because they were painted the same color. But even then, um, because of the metal gates, um, I'm a little shy about saying just how many lights we're talking about in the upper sash. It was at what I saw online when I looked at it on a much larger screen earlier, mm -hmm. off of Google Maps. It was uh, four by four on just the upper. The lower was a single was a single pane. Let me go on Google and take a look, Vicki, and I'll see what you're seeing. Yeah, when I. Yeah, this is DJ and um, I'm looking at Google Maps now and yeah, Vicki's correct. It's, it's uh, 16 over one or 16 over 16? It's 16 over one. Yeah. Wow. Which is character defining. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Either my vision's going or you have supervision. Because <laughs> I can see it. I just can't detect 16 panes. But I'll take your word for it. Yeah. Either yeah. way, I mean, this requires some additional work before giving the final approval for the replacement windows, assuming, you know, that's something this commission votes on. Um, it's a good consideration to make. Mm -hmm. uh, and the other question I had is the doors so dark in both of these pictures, were the doors replaced or not? It looks like it's a flush door in the back, but I can't tell about the front. Well, let's ask the owner. Mr. Tavera, did you replace those doors as well? We had an intention to replace the front door, but now that we know the guidelines, we will not be replacing the, the front door. I think something to note. If, if, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. If, if, I, if I may, um, you know, if I may ask the uh, chairman, the commissioners, and Ms. Velasquez, if we could potentially get the input from the uh, commission uh, as to what's appropriate and what's not appropriate. Um, what I would like to suggest is, um, you know, we, uh, the, the color seems to be okay. The windows seem, seem to be a, an issue, um, which it, it, to be honest with you, I don't know how we're going to address that. Uh, but what I would like to suggest is that if we, if we, remove the infill for that window, uh, would it satisfy the the uh, commissioners, I guess, not to d disrupt the integrity of the property in that regard? And I understand that, that it's been disrupted already, and, and I take responsibility for that. I should have known. 
Um, but at this time, we're just trying to improve the neighborhood, improve this property, make it uh, functional, make it uh, energy efficient, and just just have a, a house that it looks good and, and that it's in sync with the neighborhood. Yes, this is DJ. Um, well, I mean, to make it in sync with the neighborhood would be to at least put in new windows that are compatible with the surrounding neighborhood. And in doing so, I mean, the best way to do that would be to ideally retain the existing windows, but that can't happen now. So the next best thing is to install new windows to be compatible with the original design, which as Vicky stated, are, I mean, they're character defining features of this house. I mean, this is a very unique house in the neighborhood. So, um, I mean, replacing these windows with the generic vinyl or, or aluminum windows one over one that, that that's there now, I mean, that, that really, that really downgrades the integrity of not only the building, but the surrounding neighborhood. So it's, it, I feel it's crucial to retain the original design however we can. This is Ivan here. I, I just wanted to comment on the, the paint scheme itself. You know, I think, uh, I mean, going back to this original image, um, I think the column, the caps at top, on top of the columns are the same as the column. And for some reason, you know, whenever you change the color, you know, I think in terms of character, it's, this column cap is a little more subtle here, you know, and I think once you go to the new image, you know, the caps really stand out. Um, so I would almost also suggest that the caps be painted same as the columns, you know, to follow uh, some of the character that was, th that was there before. Okay, Ivan, speaking of which, um, I also noticed that the chimneys were also painted white. You know, generally three colors on a house, that's pretty standard. Do you have an issue with that as well? Well, it seems that the, the chimneys maintain the same color as before, right? Mm -hmm. And I think, unfortunately, that now they stand out because of that, because the, the house is now different. Um, I mean, it would be great if maybe the chimney would be the color of the house now, so you can maintain the, the uniformity of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have one more question. Why was the infill undertaken? Well, because um, the original kitchen, uh, I don't know if you can see from the, I, I don't have access to, to Teams, um, but there's one door to the, um, not on Monday Street, but on the other street. And that was virtually the, the kitchen. It was very, very small, very narrow, and it was not a functional kitchen. So we moved the kitchen to the other side and we had to move um, water lines and um, the stove and things of that nature. So that's why um, we decided to infill um, that, that, that wall so we can place the sink and move things uh, to the other side um, of where the kitchen was. You know, I'd like to add to that. We once had an application in Manhattan Heights where the property owner wanted to remove a kitchen on a secondary, uh, sorry, a window on a secondary facade that was part of the kitchen because he was doing some interior renovations. So he wanted to block it up. The HLC at the time proposed to him to not remove that window because they said in the future, you may want it again. And plus it's visible from the exterior, so don't remove it. What they proposed to him was to seal the window from inside. You know, basically close it, you could use um, a wooden board or something, paint it black, put it up against the window, nail it, and then build up against that. So from the exterior, it looks the same. The facade didn't look like it had been altered, but the interior, we know that it had been. And again, the, the emphasis was also that in the future, you may want to have that window again. Therefore, it'll be there for you if you really want it. And if you don't need it right now, then you won't need it from the inside, but from the outside, it's still visible. Had this been brought to our attention before all the work had been done, that's a solution that I would propose as well. 
I would have said the same thing. Keep that window opening, seal it from inside, and you can take it from there. As far as we're concerned, if we don't know and you still have a window there, then we're fine with it. The interior is not designated, so we couldn't say to anyone how to do your kitchen, what kind of layout you would need. Um, I would propose the same thing in this case. I think it needs that window. The window was there for a long time. It looks really off without it, especially with that shadow in its place. I think that window should go back. Understood. And and um, I mean, even though we we have spent way 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 too much money, we understand that we want to maintain the we want to minimize the damage basically. So yes, I mean we're I'm 100%. We can. Um, uncover that window again, that would be a very vi viable solution uh, for everyone. Uh, if, we, if we need to paint the chimney or if we need to paint other um, features of the house, some other color, I understand we're not historical experts and uh, we, we would follow your lead on, on whatever we need to paint on the windows. Um, the only thing is that I would ask if we could retain the windows. Uh, there's a property that might be on the next street that had similar windows to ours. So um, we didn't think that it would be an issue um, based on what the neighbors had done. Uh, that would be my only request my, in, in a very respectful manner because obviously we didn't know exactly what was what needed to be done. Yeah, this is DJ Colling. Um, acknowledged. Thank you. Um, and I mean, the, the thought process you just shared is the exact reason why I feel it's important for us to right this wrong. I mean, you looked at the neighbor and thought it was okay. So keeping these windows would, you know, give the okay to other neighbors if they do choose to replace windows without consulting us first. So uh, as a result, I mean, I, yeah, I mean, I really wish you came to us at, before doing all this work because then we would have worked on this and uh, we would have helped you. But since all of this is after the fact, I mean, you're putting us in a really tough situation and quite frankly, a situation that I don't like to be in. And I don't think any, I mean, I'm speaking on behalf of other commissioners, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think any of us want to be in this position. Um, so it's, it's not easy, but at the same time, keeping these windows here, in my opinion, sets a precedent for other property owners to just needlessly replace their windows. Um, I know you mentioned energy efficiency before, and unfortunately that's just uh, something that that window manufacturing companies came up with to sell more windows. The historic windows, when you are, are just as energy efficient if you install a storm window with them. I mean, it's the, the same R value as a double glazed new window that you, that you buy from any home improvement store. Um, the only difference is they've been time they, they've been tested over time, and I mean these were over a hundred years old. And sure, I don't know if they were operational or not, but they could have been. I mean they could have been repaired. Um, unfortunately, with these new windows, the last 20 years at most, 30 years at the very most before they completely fail. So, I mean it's uh, sure they look shiny now, but give it some time and they'll degrade poorly and that will negatively affect not only the house, but also the surrounding neighborhood. This is Shane Mercer. Uh, Mr. Tolliver, I have a comment as well. Um, I agree with what the chairman said, um, and I, I want you to know that, that I'm glad to see you trying to improve this property. I think it's great that, that homeowners are investing in this neighborhood and wanting to improve it. So this is in no way punitive. We are not nobody's intent is to make this more difficult for you or cost you money. It, however, we do have to uphold uh, city ordinances and, and our job is to protect the historical integrity of the neighborhood on behalf of the city and all the property owners that live there. Um, and so, like the chairman said, this is difficult for us, um, but there is a lot of investment in this neighborhood and we've got to make sure that we don't set a bad precedent going forward, right? And so that, that's how we are thinking about this. 
um, acknowledging that it is painful and uh, for you um, in this case, but that's why it's just so important that we understand the, the historic guidelines. My question is, if we decide, and I don't know what the commission will decide, um, but if we decide to move forward with the, the proposal, the recommendations from the historic preservation officer to replace the windows, uh, to replace the window that was infilled where the kitchen was um, within 30 days, is, is that doable? No, sir, he would not. Um, uh, the, the reality, the reality is that um, we chose a very bad contractor. So um, we two things, right? We would have to to find uh, the right windows that now we know we would have to find. Uh, we would have to get another contractor or see if we can work something out with the previous contractor. And the most important thing is that if it's a couple thousand dollars that we're going to have to invest. Uh, we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to find the money to do it. So, if I may, if we could, uh, if I may ask the the commissioners, if we could extend that a little bit longer, maybe sixty days, uh, that would be greatly appreciated. Okay, I mean those are my those are my thoughts. I'm throwing this to the commission to the chairman that um, that we would consider. Uh, understanding that time is important, and you brought up a good point. We don't want other neighbors to to follow this lead, but but I do think I would support giving him a little more time, given the, the cost and everything that, that it'll take to get this done. Um, would be my thoughts on this. Francisco Macias, I would support that giving the person more time. This is Becky. This is, I, I agree with everything that they've said. I think I'd stretch that out to 90 days instead of 60. And the other thing is where the one picky detail possibly is a maintenance issue is if you put a dark painted board behind a window, the sun usually peels it. So I would suggest a more permanent material like a laminate that would not peel and look bad over time. I also, I also concur with my colleagues. I, I agree on the extension of 90 days to uh, allow them enough time to remedy this. All right, this is DJ. Um, no, this is good. I mean, it seems like many of the commissioners are supportive of extending the time limit. Um, now I have a question for the property owner. Does 90 days work? Um, I greatly appreciate the 90 days. I, I think that that gives us a chance to try to remedy this. Okay. All right, great, thank you. Um, any other questions for the property owner before we move forward on a vote? All right, if there are no other questions, then I think we can move forward with the voting process. Um, <clears throat> with that said, I'd like to make a motion to, let's see, uh, approve this item with the modifications um, as followed, I mean, the, the windows be replaced with operable one over, or with operable 16 over one windows, um, that the window openings that, that were infilled be opened and operable and, or not operable, sorry. You know, let me just scratch this. So I'd like to make a motion to approve this item with the following modification, um, which is to replace the existing windows with operable 16 over one sash windows. Um, the one window on the properties, was it Northwest side, Northwest elevation, um, that enclosed window be opened up and be fixed with a resilient board behind it to allow for construction behind. Um, 
a good example or a good recommendation would be a laminate. Um, and all of this work would be completed within 90 days. I would like to add to that. Sure. That uh, a stipulation that the concrete caps and the chimney towers at the roof be painted to match the color of the house. Mm. Okay. Okay. Yeah, no, I, I accept that amendment. And I would also add that the dormer windows uh, match the previous um, configuration, not the 16 over one. I can't. Can you see what that was, Provy, the, the dormer window? It looks like it was a three over three in each okay. one. It's a double window configuration. It has a nice thick center uh, mullion and it looked like each window was three over three. Okay, and so I would modify it to say the dormer windows be three over three. All right, I agree with that. That's a good catch. Thank you. I second the motion. All right, so just so we're clear, the existing windows, this is my, mo this is the current motion on the table. The modifications are the existing windows be replaced um, on the, the first floor windows would be replaced with 16 over one double hung sash windows. The enclosed window bay on the building's northwest elevation would be opened up and replaced with a, a window matching the others on the first elevation and a board composed of resilient material such as uh, laminate be installed to facilitate construction behind. Um, the dormer windows on the building's second, uh, second elevation would be three over three windows to match the original intent and the chimney caps or the chimney and the column caps would be painted tan to match the rest of the building's exterior stucco. And I hope I catched it. I caught everything. Um, and yeah, I think you got everything. Okay, good. Uh, All right. I then, okay, great. Thank and you for I the second. Just that when he uh, when he selects the windows, he bring them back to Provi for her to concur that that's what we were talking about. Will do. Okay, so we're still seconded with Vicky's latest uh, amendment. Oh, and DJ, did you add the other modification? Sorry, that it can be done in three months' time, and we're not going to issue a new permit to the property until this is all completed. No, I did not. Thank you for okay. mentioning that. Yeah. Okay. Should I repeat this again or are we okay? I think you can just add what I said. Okay. All right. So you say everything you said before and then Right, right. In addition to Vicky's amendment, um, the other amendment is to complete this work within 90 days, essentially. You want to second that again, just in case? I second. Okay, thank you. All right, in that case, let's move on to a vote. Um, this is DJ and I vote yay. This is Vicky and I vote yay. This is Mark Sanacrotega, and I vote yay. Chris Esper, yay. Ivan Lopez, yay. Francisco Macias, yay. Shane Mercer, yay. All right, all votes are accounted for and we unanimously vote yay. So um, thank you very much for the coordination and um, we'll, we'll make sure this project goes through. And um, thank you for coming to discuss this with us. Thank you.
Thank you. Okay. Okay. On to item number five, when you get a chance. All right. Okay, item number five is a certificate of appropriateness for the property at 1003 East San Antonio Avenue. That's located in the McGoffin Historic District. It's zone C4H, which is commercial historic. It was constructed in 1920, it's a landmark. The certificate of appropriateness is for window and storefront replacement, window removal, removal of the door and stairs and replacement with masonry infill, construction of ramps, installation of a new window opening, installation of canopies, installation of rooftop HVAC and construction of an addition. So this building is located here in the McGoffin Historic District. It's kind of unusual in this triangular sort of shape. And I think once you see it, you'll recognize it. This is the building. And this is a picture that was taken during our last survey, which is around 2000 or so, okay? So as you can see, it has very typical windows for the time, operable wood sash, in many cases, six over six, and it has wooden storefronts. And it's primarily made of brick with some interesting details, such as the barrel tile canopies that you see at the second floor. Oh, well, you can see it's kind of lush sometimes. And here's some of the original storefront configuration. So the building is under renovation right now. They're planning to do some very great things with it. This, of course, means some extra alterations as well. Oh, here, look at some of these details. They're planning to keep these and restore them. So we're pretty happy about that. And I want you to take note of these metal rods. We believe that those held up canopies at one time. Uh, so far, we haven't found an original picture, but I'm sure there's something out there. So. So the demolition will be, as you can see, let me pull it up in my computer here. The removal of the windows and the storefronts. Replacement with metal clad windows. Metal clad windows tend to be wood, um, usually with an aluminum on top, so that it sort of looks like the original, but they're considered uh, a little more energy efficient windows, especially when it comes to the cold and things like that. So as I said, this is the demolition. The demolition consists of the removal of these components and replacement with something new, such as these windows. They wouldn't be six over six, they'd be a very standard one over one. And the storefronts would look very similar to what's there now, but in some cases, some doors would be removed and replaced and you just put back a storefront. There's also the construction of a little addition. If you look up top where it says new work right elevation east, do you see that door on the first floor? That's the addition which you can see here. If you look on the drawing, the site plan A1, look towards the left, that little itty bitty addition with the open door, that's the addition that we're talking about. That's about as big as it's going to get. So it's not a huge addition in any way, but it's something new that's being attached to the building. So again, that's something we can improve administratively either. Oh, I also want you to note the canopies at the first floor at the storefront. They're going to reuse the metal components that are still there and put back canopies that they believe were there originally. These are the windows in question. There will be, they will be covered with anodized aluminum over wood and they will be operable. and the HVAC will go on the roof. That's a perfect place to put it. There's really nowhere else for it to go. If you put it in the back, it's probably gonna take away from some of the parking. So putting it on the roof where it's not gonna be visible, it's absolutely perfect. Oops. Let's go back, pictures. Oh. Here we go, let me take you back to the pictures. Okay. So again, we're very happy that this building is getting some attention. It's very prominent. It's almost at the entrance to McGoffin. Um, it's been out of commission for a while, and they're keeping a lot of the original components, like these details, such as the bracketing and the roofing. So that makes us pretty happy. Now, when it comes to the windows, the McGoffin Historic District has guidelines that state that the windows, the new windows, must match the old in terms of materials as well, which is why you're seeing this. 
Um, had this been in one of the other historic districts we normally deal with, the residential ones like, say, Sunset Heights or Manhattan Heights or Austin Terrace, we would have proved those administratively as long as they look like the originals and they function like the originals, but the materials can be different. McGoffin does not permit this, though. The guidelines were created in, like, say, the late 80s, early 90s, so they were a little stricter and a little tougher. But the window configuration, according to the architect, will be very much the same. So we're recommending approval based on the following. The McGoffin Historic District Design Guidelines recommend if windows are damaged beyond repair, replacement windows should match the type, style, material, and finish of the original. Do not plug, cover, and or widen windows if they're on the exterior walls of the original structure. If possible, original doors should be retained. This includes original hardware, such as doorknobs, hinges, and poles. Do not widen doorways or attempt to cut new ones on the exterior walls of the original structure. If materials and or elements are beyond repair, replacing materials should match the originals as closely as possible. Brickwork, tile canopies, awnings, and large wood frame window displays are important storefront elements. Storefronts are the predominant elements of a commercial streetscape and should be restored when If materials and or elements are beyond repair, replacing materials should match the originals as closely as possible. Storefronts should be fabricated from wood, but metal storefronts will be acceptable provided that frames are painted, the design complements the architectural style of the facade and the surrounding area, Entry doors complement the structure's architectural style. And if existing doors are beyond repair, new ones should be installed. New doors should match original materials and should also be similar in design. Exterior stairs to upper floor should be located to the side and or rear of a structure not adjacent to the porch. New construction and additions should be compatible in height and scale to attach and adjacent structures. New additions should be planned so that they're constructed to the rear of the property on a non-character defining elevation and addition should complement the original structure, but not necessarily attempt to duplicate or copy it. The older structure should be identifiable from the new addition. Mechanical, electrical, and telephone equipment, as well as other obtrusive elements and or structures should be screened from view. The administrative review design guidelines recommend that it is recommended that ramps be designed and placed where they will do the least amount of damage to the historic fabric, especially the street elevation. And the Secretary of Nature's standards recommend that the historic character of a property shall be retained and preserved. The removal of historic materials or alteration of features and spaces that characterize a property shall be avoided. Deteriorated historic features shall be repaired rather than replaced. Where the severity of deterioration requires replacement of a distinctive feature, the new features shall match the old in design, color, texture, and other visual qualities and where possible materials. Replacement of missing features shall be substantiated by documentary, physical, or pictorial evidence. New additions, extra alterations, or related new construction shall not destroy historic materials that characterize the property. The new work shall be differentiated from the old and shall be compatible with the massing, size, scale, and architectural features to protect the historic integrity of the property and its environment, and new additions and adjacent or related new construction shall be undertaken in such a manner that if removed in the future, the essential form and integrity of the historic property and its environment would be unimpaired. I forgot to mention the ramps are minimal. They're very, very small. If you look at B, what is that? Three, new work front elevation. Do you see the storefronts and the doors at the storefronts? That very thin white line at the bottom is the ramp. That's as steep as they're going to get. So we don't have to construct large ramps leading up to the building or anything like that. Just something very small and very minimal. But they are part of the proposal. Also, they will be removing one stair. Oh, here we go. Exactly. Um, but keeping one on an exterior facade. So most of this proposal is actually restorative in many ways. The materials won't be matched exactly um, because we are talking about milk clad wood, but the windows will be operable and they will match the original configuration. So there's a lot to be said about this project. It's a good one going forward. It's time this neighborhood gets a little bit of TLC and it's nice to see that they're starting with this. Any questions? All right, Provi, thank you for this presentation. Um, yeah, I don't have any questions, but if any of the other commissioners do, feel free to, to ask away. Okay. Uh, let me see if the architect's there. Fred, are you there? Fred, are you there? Okay, go ahead, commissioners. I'm going to give Fred a call. Okay. I was just going to ask uh, if you can point to the 
to the addition real quick again, Toby? Oh, sure. Okay. Okay, Vaughn, you look at drawing D4. Fred, are you there? Hang one moment. Down to press okay. star six. Press star I six, Fred. Okay. Got it? Okay. Thanks. Okay. Bye. Okay, Vaughn, sorry about that. If you look at the top elevation, D4, New Work, right elevation east. Okay. You see that door? Yes. That's the addition. Okay. And in plan, it's like a little mini vestibule, correct? Exactly. It's a little tiny slip of a thing. So here it is in plan. Look to the left of the site plan. You see that little square in the parking lot just above the staircase? Yes. With the open door? That's the addition. Okay. Yeah, it's really small. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But it's an addition, it counts. Yes. So, Fred, are you there? Okay, we're experiencing some challenges. That's ah, okay. We never did this before, so it's not yeah, a problem. Yeah, it's true. Not going too badly, but okay. Any questions? I mean, if nobody has any big questions that um, that delay a vote, I mean, maybe, maybe we can move forward with the uh, with the voting procedure. Does anybody have any big questions for the architect before we move forward? Provia had one uh, question: the trim. What I'm color? here. Oh, there's Fred. Okay, mm -hmm. go ahead. Go ahead and ask Vicky. Fred is listening. The trim. What color? Hang on. Fred, do you have an answer well, for that? Is, uh, we're going to match the existing colors, which are basically white. Okay. By the way, uh, that's Fred made... Dalvin of Wright and Dalvin Arch Architects. Yeah. Okay, go ahead, Fred. Yes, yeah, so uh, I, was, I was saying that uh, we were going to basically match the colors and it'll be white. For the, are you talking trim or the windows? Both. Both, they're well, going to be white. Uh, we're going to match the existing color. We didn't, uh, we didn't find any information or on uh, what color they may have had before. So they have white on the windows and the doors and the door streams, and then the trim around the uh, awnings are uh, enough white. Uh, that uh, has not been, you know, needed to be painted. <laughs> so I think we'll use the same type of color. Okay. Now I would like to add also is that uh, the six on six windows are only on a portion of the building. <clears throat> this building was built in two, in a two construction, and it looks like one may have been uh, ten or fifteen years later, and uh, is. Uh, but the original structure is concrete, and the new one was masonry wall with wood uh, structure inside for floor and uh, and walls. Hello, I have a question to the for the owner. This is Ivan, or for the architect. Um, yes, just wanted to ask. So, on the layout of the windows, you will be maintaining the exact layout as the existing. Uh, Correct. The yes. Verse six and the one over one. Correct. Okay. So you'll ensure that all of them are followed. Correct. Yes. All right. Sounds good. All right. Sounds great. Any other questions for either the architect or Provi? All right, if there are no other questions, we can move forward with voting. Um, Fred, thank you very much for calling in and, and taking our questions. Um, this project looks really good. So um, let's move it to a vote. All right, so I'd like to make a motion to approve this project as stated. And this is DJ and I, uh, I say yay. This is Vicki, I'll second and say yay. 
Ivan, yay. Mark, yay. Chris, yay. Francisco Macias, yay. Shane, yay. All right, that is everybody. Um, Fred, thank you again for coming by and showing us this, this project. Looks really good. I have, I have a question here. I had a uh, case also earlier that I kind of missed. I didn't realize uh, it was going to go so fast. Uh, Manhattan Heights. Yes. Uh, are you? Uh, are we? Yeah, going we'll, to, did, go ahead. Yeah, sorry. We, we're we're about to loop back to that okay. item now. So um, yeah, definitely stay on the line because um, oh, yeah, we're gonna okay. explain it now. Okay, thank you. Yeah, no problem. All right, uh, Provi. So we're all set with this one. Now we're looping back to item number one. So um, once everybody's ready, we can ask Fred any sort of questions regarding this project, if there are any. Um, DJ, actually, item one was the addition of Austin Terrace. Uh, the item that Fred is talking about is the baseball field. Oh my God, you're right. Okay, I'm so sorry about that. Yeah, no. Uh, yeah, Fred, sorry. Uh, we we move forward with that one. We okay. um, yeah. So Provi will give you an update after the meeting, but um, yeah, you should be all set then. Okay, thank you very much. Appreciate it. All right, no problem. Thank you. All right, sorry about that mix up. No problem. Okay, so any word from the property representative for item number one? So, everybody there for some reason it just logged us out and now we're back oh okay yeah i'm here so, okay um is everybody else there do we still have a quorum yes yeah okay good okay yes okay so i want to see if the representative for item one was there mr sarcillo are you there luis sarcillo um mm -hmm. my recommendation is that we table this for the next meeting June 15th, because for some reason the representative is not here. We don't see him on the list of people who have joined in. Okay. Yeah, and no, I, I agree with that. Yeah, considering the recommendations, I think he should probably speak to his client about this first. Okay. Okay, how do you feel about that? Yeah, I'm, I'm ready to make a motion, so I think we're all set. Uh, does anybody else have a, uh, any objection to the tabling. Any further discussion before we bring it to a vote? No? Okay. Well, in that case, I'd like to make a motion to table item number one for the next HLC meeting. I second the motion. Thank you. Okay. All right. All those in favor? Let's see, um, I'm DJ and I vote yay. Vicky, yay. Ivan, yay. Mark, yay. Chris, yay. Francisco Macias, yay. Shane, yay. All right, sounds great. Thank you. All right, well, that seems to do it for all of the major items. So let's move on to administrative reviews and take some time to look through them before we make a vote. Yeah, it's been about three months since we last met, so we've had a few items. All right, let's take a look.
Well, you are the to everybody. On the air? Yes. Okay, does anybody have questions for the administrative reviews? I have only one comment. We have people that keep telling us that uh, there are certain kind of windows that they can't find. And I'm seeing that um, one of these owners of a non-contributing is matching. And so I would suggest that Proby find out what the... Uh, source of, of those windows were and so that she can advise people that yes they are available um vicky i advise everybody that their windows are available i know they just don't want to pay for them okay so when someone says to me well they don't make that kind of window anymore i say yeah actually they do and okay. we can show you who makes them i'll go back to working on my little presentation uh <laughs> thank you <laughs> We do the same thing with roofing. When someone says, oh, they don't make barrel tile roofing anymore, we tell them actually they do. It's expensive, but they do. Well, I've seen that the dealers have come and said it was no longer available. And then the next time they come in with the thing they said they couldn't get. Yes. Exactly. All right. Well, that's good to hear. Um, if there are no further questions, then I'd like to approve these meeting minutes. Um, I'd like to make a motion to approve these administrative reviews as stated. I second and vote yay, Vicki. All right. And um, this is DJ, I vote yay. I have vote yay. Mark, vote yay. Chris, yay. Francisco Macias, I'll abstain. Shane, yay. Mark, are you there? I, this is Mark, I vote yay. Okay. All right, fantastic. Thank you. All right, let's move on to the next agenda item, which is the meeting minutes from March 9th. So let's take some time to look through these.
All right, this is DJ. Um, I have no questions, but I just want to thank Shane for taking over for me during that meeting. Um, I really appreciate you, um, you know, stepping up and making it work when uh, when I was not able to go last minute. So I really do appreciate it. Thank you, DJ. I limped through it. That's a tough, tough job. Grateful for you. <laughs> hey, no problem. Glad to see you make it out alive. <laughs> um, all right. So, any other questions regarding these minutes? No. All right. Well, if there are no questions or edits that are needed, um, I'd like to approve these minutes as stated. As a motion, sorry. I'll second. Okay, let's go down the line. Um, this is DJ and I abstain. This is Vicky and I abstain. I have a vote for yay. Mark, vote yay. Chris, yay. Francisco Macias, I'll abstain. Shane, yay. All right, sounds great. Well, thank you again. And um, I think we're ready to move on to the next item. So let's, oh, okay, the last item is discussion and actions on chapter 2020. So, Provy, okay. any updates? Yeah, it's still not dead. So we're going to go forward um, with the changes we're going to send them to the dmd uh, because we're interrupted and ask them to give us their blessing after that we're going to bring these back to you we're going to have everybody look over them one more time and then start taking this over to city council so we're closer all right all right sounds good, sounds good. Okay. So, so just just, in, just a quick question about this when the time comes for us to look at it again, are we going to be doing it remotely? Is there going to be an option to do it remotely in case we're still going through this by then? Um, yeah, if we have to do it remotely, we'll do it remotely. But it'll be a little while before we get to that point, DJ. Okay, few, okay. You know, I don't know what's going to happen in the next few weeks. Um, but if, yeah, if we have to do it remotely, we will. This was our first meeting. It wasn't too bad. We had a few glitches. For the most part, we did get through it, and we did understand what we were doing, yeah. or what we were saying. So, yeah. Um, once those are ready to go, like I said, we will bring them back to you. I'd like everyone to take a look and let me know if you have any questions. There have been some edits and a few changes here and there, and we try to address absolutely everything. So if you see anything in there that we may have forgotten or that you think needs some clarification, that would be the time to let us know. Because after that, they go to city council, and then they're good to go. All right, sounds good, thank you. Okay. All right, any other questions or comments before we adjourn today's meeting? No? All right, well, in that case, I'd like to make a motion to adjourn today's meeting. I second, well, okay. All right. Uh, uh, one thing I wanted to say is, uh, it's okay. great that we see each other again. You know, I think this is awesome. Uh, and I, I think I hope that everybody's staying safe and that their families are doing well um, through these times. Yeah, and it's Thank good you. to slow up construction for people. Um, I'm sure they were frustrated. And thank you for all the administrative approvals you've done. Absolutely. Um, yeah. We're still here. We're still coming to the office. We're still, you know, processing applications and doing what we need to do. Oh, so you're not working remotely. Uh, most days we're not actually. We come to the office on a staggered schedule. I'm here at least three days a week. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, I'd just like to echo Yvonne and Vicky. I mean, thank you very much for keeping things going, keeping things afloat, and um, I hope everybody is doing well. Um, it's really good to hear from everybody, and as much as it's good to be safe at home, really miss everybody getting together and um, talking about these things in person. So hopefully we'll get back to that soon. But in the meantime, I'm really happy that we were able to make this work. And um, next time I won't be late. So 
will be in good shape. <laughs> so thank you again. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. All right. Stay well, safe and healthy. Thank you all. Good yes. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you. Meeting adjourned at. Did we all vote in favor of yay for approving the minutes? No, I don't think so. Um, I think there are some abstentions, but we did vote we did, in okay. favor of approving the minutes. Yeah. Okay. Oh, all right. Yeah, it looks like there were three abstentions and four yeas. Okay. So I think we're in good shape. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. So, all right. Well, as far as I'm concerned, meeting is adjourned at uh, five thirteen p.m. So, thanks again, everybody. Okay. See you next time. Okay. Thank, thank you. you. Bye bye. Thank you.